Clash of Clans. What a wonderful game. But sometimes it feels like the game could use something that it doesn't. Or every now and then someone comes up with an idea that will change the game forever. Here's 50 features that start off as fan ideas and actually ended up in the game. Now, if you're a fan of the series, you know every episode we do is 12. But, since the last episode was uploaded ages ago, I thought new viewers and those who forgot what was in those previous episodes could use a bit of a refresh. So, the first 14 we mentioned are new, and the ones after that are the previous episodes. Yes, I added two extra ones just to make it a satisfying number. 48 just sounds weird and incomplete. <laughs> Anyways, let's get right into it. Let's do this. Catapult. For some reason, the Clash community has always been obsessed with a catapult-type defense, troop, or siege machine. Whatever form implements it, it's been suggested for years, long before Tunnel 13 was even considered, and long before siege machines. The concept started to pop up around 2016 for Clash Royale, but it quickly became apparent that maybe it was better for Clash Clans. It just made more sense. After some time, people made concepts for a siege machine in a building that did the same thing, and fast forward to today, we have the scatter shot in the Flame Flinger, and it's pretty clear Supercell took some inspiration from those original concepts. Personally, I think the Flame Flinger is like pretty spot on to those original concepts, but the scatter shot is pretty close too. Clan Capital. Okay, this is a pretty obvious feature that started from community ideas. There's been numerous cases where developers stated that this was inspired by the community, but let's go back a little bit in time. If you were playing during 2014 and 2015, surely you saw forum posts on ideas for clan villages or clan bases. A base where the clan managed all together. Yeah, we were pretty optimistic back in the day. <laughs> it was a pretty popular suggestion, so much in fact that it landed in the ruled out features list. A list of features that they had no plans on adding into the game. It remained this way for years and years until finally, in 2019, developers revisited the idea. By 2020, the clan village was already in the update roadmap, and after some delays, we finally got the clan capital update in May of 2022. It all started with a vision from the community of one day having a base that the clan contributed to, and that's exactly what we got. And some. Research Potion. Another idea that was confirmed to be based on community suggestions was another magic item. This was back in 2019 when magic items were still a new thing, and the community was coming up with all sorts of magic items. One of them was a laboratory boost that would speed it up by 10 times for one hour. Surprisingly, Supercell ended up adding this exact thing about a year later in July 2020, but even better than the original concept, speeding it up by 24 times for the same duration. Hero Skins Okay, this one was a pretty difficult one to research because whatever I searched, I only saw skin ideas from when after skins were added. But I do recall seeing skin ideas way back in the day before this was ever a thing. In fact, I think it was a ruled out idea, meaning they had zero plans to implement hero skins. But it's been confirmed by Darian that hero skins was based on community suggestions, probably from all of those old concepts and Reddit posts and Clash of Clans forum posts, of course. The first hero skin, the Gladiator King, would appear in Clash of Clans in April 2019 for the game's first season. Clan Games this one has an interesting story, but also one that has very little info. I don't know if that makes sense. So, all the way back in October 21st, 2012, a user named Clash of Clans Lover suggested adding clan games in the Clash of Clans forums. Yeah, I wish I had more, but that's about all we know. The reason we have little info on this is because the Clash of Clans forums no longer exist, so any original details and concepts that he had are lost in time. This will be confirmed years later in a Reddit post by Darian, highlighting some of the various features that were based on community suggestions. We're probably gonna mention this like five times in this video. <laughs> One of them was clan games. Thank God someone suggested clan games, right? I wonder how long it would have took them to add it if it wasn't suggested. It was a much needed feature. Scenery Shop. In a previous episode, we mentioned how the skin shop was a community suggestion. Well, the same goes for the scenery side of the shop. Early concepts like this one by King Cade simply asking for a way to buy scenery with gems. But this concept wasn't the first or the last. Supercell would eventually add the scenery shop in December of 2022, but unfortunately they would cost real money and not gems. But to some people, that's more than enough. Scenery and Skin Randomizer. 
Okay, I'm gonna combine these two since they are fairly small features. It's the scenery and skin randomizer, that little button that shuffles them. The skin one was suggested first about three years ago by E12 Dragon, and here's some of the concepts. It looks pretty basic, but straight to the point. And as for the scenery randomizer, this was suggested in a Reddit post where a developer would ask Redditors to request quality of life changes they wanted to see in the future updates. Both of these features would show up in the game shortly after they were suggested. I personally haven't used either of them, but it's nice to know that we have the option, and I'm sure a lot of people appreciated it. Super Minor. On the 11th of July 2022, a Reddit user by the name Clash of Clans underscore Trivia posted a concept for a super miner. Of course, at the time, the mighty miner already existed in Clash Royale, so this was just that, but as a super troop in Clash of Clans. Now, it's unknown if this was inspired by the concept or if Supercell already had it in mind months ago, but one thing we do know for sure is that if it wasn't due to the concept, this was a heck of a wild guess. Customize Clan House. This was probably one of the most unexpected things Supercell added to the game. Reminds me of Everdale. Anyways, when the clan capital came out, players noticed there was a clan house for every player, and it didn't take long for people to suggest these clan houses to be customizable. One of the first examples I found was posted in April 28th, 2022, when sneak peeks were still being shown. The update wasn't even out yet. About eight months later, in December of 2022, clan houses were now customizable. Permanent Shovels when shovels were added, there were a couple issues with it. It was too expensive, and it was a one-time use. For years, people suggested some tweaks to make it worth its cost, and one of the most popular and first ideas was posted on January 2019. The idea was once the shovel was used, the obstacle would take on similar properties as a decoration, so you could move it around freely whenever you want it. It was a long shot, yes, but in December of 2022, this exact change was made. Clan Improvements. Okay, I bundled these three features together because they're pretty small features that pertain to the clan page. One of them was replacing the level with the town hall of the player because Let's be honest, who's even checking levels nowadays? The other suggestion was a sorting option, and finally, seeing when a player was last active. All of these would end up being added throughout quality of life updates. As for the last active though, this would only be available for leaders and co-leaders. I'm not even kidding, I thought everyone could see it until now that I'm reading the patch notes. Hero Potion. This magic item was confirmed by Darian to be community suggested, though I couldn't find any old concepts or posts on it, so it might have been a deleted post or something. I don't know. Anyways, even though not what the community wanted for the most parts, this magic item for heroes is pretty useful for certain situations, and thanks to the community we have it. Clan War Leagues Another confirmed community addition. It's crazy to think that such a beloved feature was inspired by the community. I remember back in the day people make concepts of clan war tournaments, and this is exactly where it stems from. Years of ideas and concepts finally became a reality in October of 2018. In my opinion, one of the best and rewarding features in the game. Use an upgrading lab. Yeah, I didn't really know what to title this one, but it should be pretty obvious what this one is about. The lab always had this one problem. When upgrading it, it would become useless. For years, players have been asking Supercell to let us use the lab while it's upgrading. And even though it's so un-Supercell-like to add this feature, they ended up doing exactly that in December of 2022. This applies not only to the laboratory, but also the Star Laboratory and the Pet House. The Air Bomb. The air bomb was actually one of the first fan suggestions to be ever added into the game. It was suggested in October of 2012, only two months after launch, by a user named BB Odega. I'm not sure if that's how you say it, but uh, yeah. The trap was then announced in February of 2013 and released within a couple days. I personally didn't know this. I mean, I thought the air bomb was already a thing when the game came out, but no, apparently not. The more you know, I guess. The Witch. It's not often that Clash of Clans adds a literal troop from an idea. I mean, we do know that the Miner and the Baby Dragon was also a fan idea, but these troops already existed in the Clash Royale world. So no one really had to make those troops, you know. At the time, we only had the Minions, Hogwriter, and the Valkyrie, so there was a lot of room for improvement. There was 
just the barracks was empty pretty much. So people started to make ideas about what could be the next Dark Troop. After about a month, Super Soul announced the Yolom and then I assume they started to work on the Witch because they liked the idea. So that was added in July of 2013, about 4 months after the Golem. It's a pretty interesting story and I'd love to know if any more troops were purely based on fan ideas. Balloons Death Damage You know that thing balloons do when they die and they fall down and drop a bomb? Yeah, that wasn't there. That was actually a user submission and I did not know this. Now this is a pretty bad quality video but work with me here, this is from 2012. If you look closely, when the balloon was taken out, it sort of just vanished into thin air. I can't believe I even found this footage. <laughs> Anyways, in April of 2013, the balloons were updated to now deal death damage and so they got a new fresh animation and it's been about the same since then. Upgradable Traps This one has an interesting story because it all started way back when the game came out. Upgradable Traps was a common fan idea. I mean, let's be honest, anything that didn't have a level, we made concepts for. So the Builder Hut, somebody made levels for that. Traps, they had no levels so people started to make concepts. And so eventually they ended up adding levels for traps in November of 2013, which was only about a year and a couple months after launch. Everything got a level except for one trap. The spring trap. Players again started to suggest ideas for a new spring trap level. What could it do? What could it look like? Supercell saw these suggestions, but it was never really a priority. Finally, though, about three years later in May of 2016, spring traps were finally given levels. It was kind of a back and forth situation with the community and Supercell, but hey, I think it was well worth the wait. Co leaders. If you didn't know, Clans back then only had members, elders, and a leader. Pretty weird to think about today, huh? Well anyways, this feature took surprisingly long to be added. I mean, I don't remember it being that long, but yeah, it was added about a year and a half after launch, which was in January of 2014, around the same time as Town Hall 10 was added to the game. The reasons are pretty obvious, I believe. You have a clan full of 50 people, and the only thing separating members and the leader was Elder. There needed to be something in between. So when co-leaders were added, Elders were given a nerf, and the rest, as they say, is history. Tornado Trap Similar to the Air Bomb, the Tornado Trap was a fan idea as well. On February 21st, 2013, a user named Dark Matrona J suggested adding the Tornado as a new defense that attacks both ground and air units. Yes, that long ago. It wasn't until five years later that it was announced in October of 2018. We didn't exactly get the defense though, we got a trap form of it. I'm assuming it did the same thing as people wanted, so uh, yeah. Again, I didn't know this one, and it actually wasn't on the list. Uh, I actually found this scrolling through the Clash wiki, so uh, pretty interesting. Splash damage for dragons and wizards. It's weird to think of a time when wizards and dragons did no splash damage. I mean, isn't that what they're known for to do today? What good would a wizard be if he could only hit an archer at a time, you know? Well, that's exactly what people thought back in the game's launch. It didn't make a whole lot of sense that these two troops that seemed like they could hit multiple troops weren't. In March of 2013 though, both of these troops now did splash damage. And it was all thanks to community suggestions. We did it guys. A skeleton or witch related trap. Okay, this is the third and last trap in the video. People really like making cool concepts of traps and Supercell really likes to test the great ideas I guess. As it reads, the suggestion was for a skeleton or a witch related trap. Something to do with skeleton spawning, you know? I couldn't find when or who suggested the idea, but we do know that it was added in the game in October of 2014 as part of a Halloween update. I think I remember reading somewhere that it was supposed to be a temporary trap, but everyone liked the trap so much, they just ended up keeping it. I don't know, I could be imagining things, but that wouldn't make a whole lot of sense. Profiles 
Profiles as we know it today are completely different as to what we had back then. But it all started with one thing, fan suggestions. At launch, the game didn't really have a profile feature. When you wanted to look at someone's profile, well, there was none. You just kind of visited their base or invited them to your clan. That's all you could do. Well, players who played Heyday noticed that, wait a second, Heyday has profiles. So why doesn't Clash of Clans, huh? I guess we can give partial thanks to Heyday for existing, but also inspiring some new Clash of Clans features. After all, Heyday was released before Clash of Clans, so think of Heyday as the big brother who was giving advice at the time. Profiles were added into Clash of Clans about a year after launch in August of 2013. Custom Troop Request Of course, this one was fan submitted. We were all fed up with receiving goblins and wall breakers. This feature took incredibly long to be added into the game. I mean, if we take a look at when this was added, it was barely yesterday. The idea has been suggested for an eternity. Nobody really liked receiving the wrong troops, you know? So everyone suggested, hey, why don't we have a system where you could just donate and receive what you wanted? One of the better concepts came from a YouTuber named Bob Fobson, who made a video on how this new system would work. And let me tell you, it wasn't too far off. The concept was made in January of 2018, so a pretty long time before the feature was actually added. I think everyone was happy when this feature was announced though. Clan Mail. I'm not surprised this was a fan idea, but it makes me wonder sometimes, how long would we have been waiting for some of these features if nobody spoke up? Anyways, Clan Mail was actually added at the same time as Co-Leaders, so that update really gave clans an upgrade. The feature was pretty well received since now the leader could send a mail instead of having to tell every single person in the clan about a new rule. Though, there was a side of the community that wasn't exactly satisfied because they claimed anyone should be able to send a mail. Uh, yeah, no. The loot cards. It's really not a surprise that the loot card was a fan suggestion because after all, we love free things. That isn't a bad thing though because that's how we eventually got the loot card and the gem mine and a lot more features like this. Players around the world have always wanted some return from getting attacked. Like a get well soon gift, you know? A pretty neat feature to this day. The free spell. According to Supercell, the free spell was suggested one day and they immediately started to work on it as the next spell to be added in the game. Like, whoa! The suggestion was so good, they just had to drop everything they were doing and work on this spell. And yeah, the free spell isn't some original concept for games, but Someone thought it would be cool for Clash of Clans, and Supercell liked the idea, and, well, as they say, the rest is history. Clan Wars Yes, surprisingly, one of the biggest features in the game was in fact inspired by the community. It's crazy to imagine, like, what if we never suggested Clan Wars? How long would we have waited? Or, in fact, would we even have Clan Wars at all? We'll never know for sure, but it would have eventually got suggested anyways. I mean, people always made jokes about how it was called Clash of Clans, but the clans never clashed. <sighs> The fact that I remember that makes me feel very old. Goddamn. Anyways, it's great that Supercell was inspired by the community on one of their biggest features to date. I personally didn't know this, so the more you know, I guess. The Inferno Tower. So, fun fact, this was actually inspired by several requests for a flamethrower tower. Yes. Back when Tall Hall 9 was the highest Tall Hall, naturally people speculated and came up with these ideas for Tall Hall 10. Supercell saw the great ideas the community was suggesting back then, and the flamethrower idea stood out the most, which was then added as the Inferno Tower. A little different, but that's where the inspiration came from. Also, the community kept suggesting to add a defense that targeted multiple troops at the same time from different tiles. And so, as you guessed it, the Inferno Tower was given a multi-target setting. We pretty much built the Inferno Tower. Village Construction Mode Obviously, this is referring to Village Edit Mode but I kind of like construction mode better. And yeah, that's how it was listed. This is undoubtedly one of the best features ever added in the game. In fact, I'ma have to say it's the best in my book because 
Without it, I wouldn't be here today. Many of you probably know that I mainly grew my channel off of base builds shortly after this feature was added. But did you know it was community suggested? I didn't. I thought Supercell just came up with it out of the blue, not gonna lie. So apparently the community wanted a way to build our bases better without having to shift everything around. And most commonly this was referred to as an idea called the village construction mode. We had no idea how Supercell would implement this, but we just knew that we wanted something like this. And what we got was probably more than anybody expected, not gonna lie. It was great. And over the years, it's been improved more and more, and it's still being improved, so you gotta love it. Saved troop compositions and rebuilding last army. Bro, you know that struggles back then to constantly have to remember an army and train it every single time. Saving armies and retraining them is probably one of the best things that's been added. It just makes things easier and saves you so much time. Like who bothers to remember an army nowadays, huh? Just copy one and save it forever and you can train it whenever you want. It's so easy. Best thing since sliced bread. I'm glad the community had enough of this and act supercell over and over until they eventually added the new barrack system, which by the way, they are still improving today. Builder suggestions. Tap builder info to see and select suggested upgrades to perform. Okay, this one brings me back to a time when you didn't really know if you were 100% max until you tapped on stuff to see if it had another level or if you went into village edit mode to kind of see what everything was at. And you had to go to Google to see because you didn't really know what a max talent 10 looked like. <laughs> yeah, if you know. You know, this isn't something we needed, let's be honest, but God, is it useful, eh? I check this tab on a daily basis now just to see how close I am to max. A plus for the community, and of course, Supercell for implementing this and listening to the community. Heroes. This one also comes as a surprise to me because I feel like I never once saw hero concepts or ideas before heroes were actually a thing. According to this list, heroes were originally a community suggestion and Supercell took that and actually added some form of heroes in the game. So yeah, I didn't know that, so that's pretty cool to know. Baby Dragon and Miner. These two troops were originally cards in Clash Royale and players love that game so much and the cards in it that they were starting to suggest, hey Supercell, add this card to Clash and this one and that one. A matter of fact, can you add all the cards in Clash Royale to Clash of Clans? Of course, Supercell noticed this and decided to start with the Miner and Baby Dragon. Later on, they would add more. These two cards made the most sense at the time, and the rest is history. Dark Spell Factory When Dark Elixir Truce was added in early 2013, a lot of players started to speculate on what else would have an alternative Dark Version. I mean, we have Dark Elixir troops, so now, naturally, we need Dark Spells. Now, this wasn't added immediately after Dark Elixir troops. In fact, it took years, but Supercell eventually did listen to the community. I guess it just took some time to make sure they were doing it correctly and balance it and come up with some great spells. This changed the game. I mean, new strategies started to emerge and old strategies were being updated to include these new spells. It was pretty great. Like I said, it took them a while to add this, but I think it was well worth the wait. A mark indicating the center of the playing grid. Okay, this one isn't too important, but it's just something we take for granted and never notice how helpful it actually is. I mean, nowadays it's not as useful because you can shift your base with the village edit mode wherever you want. So if you make a mistake, just shift it a direction. But before this feature, this dot was extremely helpful in knowing where the center was. But before this dot, if you accidentally made your base off center and you started to build it and ran out of space in one side, then you had to start over. Like you couldn't just move your base. And also you didn't even know where the center was. This is where the center mark came in handy and solved that problem of needing to guess or count where the center was. Again, not a huge addition and probably not as useful today, 
but it was extremely helpful for years. Gem mine. I've probably talked about this one most, but yes, the gem mine was a community suggested feature and also one that was ruled out for years. I've mentioned this one a lot, so I'll keep it short. Pretty much the gem mine was ruled out for years because people kept making gem mine concepts and Supercell had to respond. Like, no. It just no. But when making the builder base, the gem mine was seen as a potential feature regardless of it being ruled out or not. So it was added. But yeah, at the end of the day, clearly this was a community suggested feature because who doesn't love free gems, right? We obviously came up with the idea. Storage is immune to lightning. The community was fed up with everyone dropping lightning spells on their Dark Elixir storages for easy loot or just plain revenge. Everyone was asking for some sort of immunity to lightning spells for these storages so that when someone came along with lightning spells trying to steal your hard earned Dark Elixir, it wouldn't be as easy as just dropping them on the storages, you know? Supercell's answer was great. There was no immunity but a shield. A shield was given to all storages, which solved this problem overnight. Town Hall Defense Add-on. One very interesting thing I found was a video that dates back to February of 2014, suggesting a cool idea for Town Hall 10 before it existed. Basically, the idea was to have your usual Town Hall upgrade, but with a twist. It would have a defense on top of it, and one of the pictures shows a Tesla. Looks familiar, huh? Unfortunately, the uploader never got his idea added and he probably doesn't play anymore. It's a sad story. That was until June of 2018, over four years later. A Giga Tesla was added to Town Hall 12 and then, you know, the rest is history. We got more for Town Hall 13, 14, and yeah. I'm pretty sure this video wasn't the first idea to talk about it, but his concept of having a Tesla as a defense on the Town Hall was pretty accurate. I think it's safe to say that Supercell got some inspiration from the community on this one. The Yeti This is not on the list, but the original Yeti idea dates back to 2013. Yes, 2013! Whoa! It was created by a guy named Rocky Devies, and apparently it was a submission for a contest. There's no doubt the community came up with this one first. Now sure, the original concept didn't look the same, but it's sort of the same troop. I mean, it, it kind of looks the same, and not really at the same time. Like, just look at their hands. It, it's sort of the same thing, right? Anyways, the idea was incredibly popular, and it was featured in many videos back in the day. Even so, that at one point, people thought it was a real troop that got leaked. Now, the hype for the idea died down somewhere in 2016 after three years of continuously showing it in videos, and it wasn't until December of 2019 where it was finally added. Dismiss troops from Clan Castle and Army Camp. Remember the days when we had to dump troops we didn't want in a goblin map? Yeah. This isn't necessary today because you can easily remove the troops you don't want from a single button. This is all thanks to the community as stated by Supercell here on this list. I don't have much to say on this one other than I'm proud of the community. It was extremely annoying dumping troops the old way and being able to dismiss troops is incredibly helpful. Skin Shop when I was researching for my facts video, I read a lot of AMAs on Reddit, and AMA basically stands for Ask Me Anything, and developers usually do these like once or twice a year on Reddit. On one occasion, I found somebody asking Darian from Supercell if we could have a skin shop for skins we didn't get a chance to get from the past, maybe like from the past few months or something. Darian said something along the lines of, that would be great. The community was asking for this for ages, and even concepts were made as you can see here in these two examples. Now in early 2020, we finally got a tab in the shop to buy old skins, and you can also get them directly from the skin selection screen from that hero. I think it's a very nice feature. Sceneries Another unconfirmed community addition is sceneries. Over the years, people have made concepts of being able to change your base's background. 
Now, it was a little hard to find these on Google because every time I searched anything remotely close to Clash of Clans background, all I got was sceneries. I wasn't looking for sceneries. I was looking for that time when we used to make a whole lot of concepts of these different backgrounds. But yeah, it's really hard to find them now. But anyways, I found three examples after searching for a few hours. And trust me, there's a lot more of these, but just very difficult to find. Like I said, it's unconfirmed since Supercell has never actually said this was a community-driven idea, but it's a little obvious that it was. Even today, some of these sceneries are made by the community. Removing Obstacles in Village Edit Mode Imagine this, it's 2013 and you're building a base. But you realize the base you're making is bigger than what you had before and now it doesn't exactly fit because of an obstacle. Your only options are to exit village edit mode, remove the obstacle and start over, or move stuff around the obstacle, save the base, remove the obstacle, and then go back and fix it. Seems a little complicated, right? Can't you just click save for later or remove the obstacle in village edit mode? Well, no. These two features weren't a thing when Village Edit Mode was first added. You could not save for later, and you could not remove an obstacle when building a base. Luckily, it seems like sometime in 2014, the feature to remove an obstacle while in edit mode was added, which was incredibly helpful. It also happened to be a community suggestion. It wasn't until later as well where the save for later button was added. Attack replays and defense replays. Now technically, these were two separate community suggestions, but why separate them? They're practically the same thing, right? So according to Supercell, an attack log with replays and defense replays were both submissions they really liked and it became a reality shortly after. To be honest though, I feel like Supercell would have added this anyways if nobody bought it up because it's such an important feature, but it looks like the community came up with the idea first. That's why Supercell gave the community credit for it. Good job, everyone. Show remaining lab upgrades during active research. This isn't such a huge feature and we probably could have gone without it, but if you were playing back in the day, you know how annoying it was to have a lab that was practically useless for two weeks. <laughs> you basically saw the troop you were currently upgrading along with a timer when you clicked on the lab. It would be like this until that upgrade was finished, and like I said, this was sometimes weeks. It wasn't fun at all, but luckily the community suggested there be a way to see remaining upgrades while an upgrade was in progress, and that's exactly what we got in early 2013. Army camp troops survive if army camp destroyed while on defense. Yep, you can thank the community for your troops not dying every time you logged off. When the game was still fairly new, if you had a camp full of troops and you got attacked and the camps were destroyed, so were the troops. You can only imagine how frustrating this was, especially how back in the day troops took hours to train and it cost a ridiculous amount. Luckily, like the entire video, the community came in clutch, suggesting that this does not happen. Of course, Supercell listened to the community, and now troops don't die every time the camp gets destroyed. Thank God. Matchmaking Q. I remember I talked about this months ago, but I don't remember which video it was. But basically, I explained that back in the day, matchmaking was slower because of one thing. There was no Q. What that means is that every time you hit next, the game would take a while to find a base because there was no Q happening in the background. This is drastically different today because the game now has a Q and every time you hit next, it's already found a base. And if it hasn't, it only takes a couple of seconds to search. This, of course, is all thanks to the community which suggested a matchmaking Q of some sorts back when the game was still relatively new. Moving your entire base in village edit mode. When I was looking for community suggestions that were added to Clash of Clans that weren't on the list, I looked at a lot of wish list type videos and in one of those videos, I came across a very old comment about a feature that the commenter wanted. In one of these suggestions, he said, a button to select all items in base builder so you can center your whole base 
if you misplaced it at the start. Now this comment was posted in mid 2014 and sure enough, this feature was added along with many other things that he said. Upgradable builders. Even though Supercell has never mentioned where they got the idea from, I think it's safe to say, or better yet, I think it's very obvious that the community played a role in this one. For years, players have been making concepts for upgradable builders. I mean, they were everywhere. In fact, upgradable builders were once ruled out because people kept asking Supercell for this and they kept saying no. But a few years later, they changed their mind for Town Hall 14. I think this is clear proof that the community were the ones to convince Supercell of the idea. And if it isn't, please explain in the comments. All right, so that concludes 50 fan ideas that were added to Clash of Clans. Finally, another episode, right? But nowadays, it seems that they're adding more features based on the community. So expect another episode sometime this year, I guarantee it. If not, you know what, I'm not gonna promise anything. <laughs> yeah, last time I did that, I ended up making a heyday video. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching. Have a gaming out. Peace.